Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, today's webinar is on the topic, Building Your Contract Training Business with Grants and State Reimbursements. And we're happy to have Leslie Larrabee of AugieSoft with us today as our main presenter. And my name is Chris Murphy, and I'm also with AugieSoft. And today's web webinar is being brought to you by AugieSoft. And for those who may be new, um, AugieSoft develops a software tool called Lumens, which is an enrollment management system designed for the continuing education industry. But before we get going, I just wanted to run through some real basic uh, webinar guidelines. Um, first off, just wanted to let you know that we're going to ask a couple of polling questions throughout the course of Leslie's webinar today. And so you'll see those appear on your screen. And then you'll have about a minute to respond. And then we'll move on with the presentation. Um, we are recording the webinar today, as we do all the webinars that we do um, here at AugieSoft. And so we'll get a link um, up probably within the next 24 hours where you can download a recording as well as the slides that Leslie will present today. Um, if you do have to step away at any point, we just ask that you um, actually sign out and then sign back in as that tends to work better for the GoToWebinar system. And then finally, if you've got any questions, we are going to save some time at the end for questions. And so we ask that you send those in through the questions box on the toolbar, which is on the right-hand part of your screen. And then we'll get to as many of those as we can at the end. So with that, I think we're ready to go. And so, Leslie, um, I will turn things, turn things over to you. So welcome. Thank you, Chris. I really appreciate the introduction. And I appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak with you today um, about, this, about this topic, which I think is near and dear to all of our hearts in terms of, you know, how do I get more money to help me operate my contract training business? So we're going to spend some time talking about that today. But before we, um, before we jump in, I just want to give you a little background on myself. I am currently a product advisor and an account manager working with AugieSoft. Um, I started that um, on a full-time basis in January of this year, which is very exciting. Uh, but I have, spent, I have been working with AugieSoft over the last six years, um, first as a customer and then as a product advisor as they built their contract training um, functionality for, um, for their software products. Um, and I was able to do that because I have a pretty long history in working in the contract training arena in the community college system. So um, I think I cut my teeth in 2000 uh, as a district dean of economic development and contract training for a multi-campus district in Northern California. So I have worked and operated in your shoes as a contract training practitioner um, and leader and um, uh, know how important uh, grants are um, uh, and any kind of state reimbursement dollars I can get to my business. So as we kind of uh, jump in here, um, we're going to be talking about both grants and state reimbursements. They are a little bit different um, in, terms of, in terms of how you're going to work with them. Um, so we're going to do some definition um, and conversation about that. And then we're going to talk about um, some best practices, what I find to be best practices for um, working with these kinds of funds in your contract training business. And then we'll spend a little bit of time talking about the importance of being able to manage um, and track what's going on with your, with your grants and state reimbursements to kind of your ongoing business practices. So let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, I wanted to, I wanted to talk a little bit about grants. So grants for contract training really are coming from um, organizations, federal, state agencies, like the Department of Labor, where we're looking for um, a source of funding that's going to help me offset the cost that my employers in the area that are going to partake in this, um, they, they're able to, we're able to help pay or offset the cost that the companies are going to have to invest in this training. Department of Labor does this. I'll, uh, a number of times through a number of different venues. Um, I think there's you know, some, some trade assistance funds that are out there. Um, but because of the focus on, on community colleges at the federal level, um, you're starting to see the Department of Education and the Department of Labor partner together in order to offer, um, in order to offer more, um, more opportunities, more grant opportunities. You also look for grants through nonprofit organizations like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. 
You know, they've got a major focus on completers, but if you are able to define how your um, students can be completers through a community college, a different avenue, um, there is some ways that you can um, you can find funds through something like a Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And then there's also grant opportunities through an industry sector, like Bayer um, has a foundation, you know, the Aspen people, they have in the healthcare industry, they have an education foundation um, where there are grant opportunities that you can get through through that kind of an industry, or through, through that kind of an agency. So as you look at um, opportunities, um, for you to identify and find those um, uh, opportunities, you want to you want to do you do want to look at federal uh, state agencies, including your own um, uh, system office, chancellor's office. I know in the state of California um, that we have uh, uh, a pocket of money that's called the Responsive Training Fund, um, and we're able to apply in California for those funds through the through the state chancellor's office to help us offset the cost of training for our employers. Um, and so um, as you look and investigate what opportunities are there, please don't forget your own system office um, as, a, as a source of those kinds of funds. So um, about grants. So, <laughs> um, they are, you know, so uh, grants are not a not necessarily a panacea in terms of solving, you know, all your problems because grants are a lot of work. You know, grants have an extensive application process. You probably have to have, um, you know, some part of that already. In, uh, some part of your operation has already got to be targeted either towards the industry sector you're looking at or what specific requirements there are from the Department of Labor for you to get access to those funding, you know, and so the application process is pretty rigorous. And we're going to talk about some best practices around those um, in just a moment. But you also have some extensive management and tracking responsibilities as well as reporting responsibilities when you get money from any one of these kinds of organizations. So they've got some specific outcomes they're looking for for their investment in dollars, and it would be your responsibility to make sure that you supply the information, um, manage and track your uh, performance against those metrics um, that come with that. And that can be um, pretty extensive in and of itself. The other thing about grants um, is really that there's no margin in grants. So it's not like offering a contract training class and you're saying, hey, you know, here's this training class, and it's going to cost me $1,400 to deliver, and I'm going to charge you, my client, $2,800. And I've got a $1,400 operating margin left over at the end of the day. Well, that's not true with a grant. So with a grant, you have to expend the money that they're giving you in the categories of funding to which they've allocated that money for. And so there's nothing left over at the end of the day. <laughs> Uh, and so, um, I, you know, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about grants in terms of how they can help support your contract training business, but they are, they are not in and of themselves a way to generate additional income or additional revenue for your organization. They certainly can help support what you're doing, um, but we're going to talk about the impact that they can have on your ongoing business. So I've got a poll question for you right now. So, Chris, can you... Can you pop that up? Yep. Thanks, Leslie. So now you should all see the question on your screen. Have you ever received a grant for your contract training unit? And uh, we've got a couple of options for you to choose from in terms of answering. And so we'll just give you a little time to respond, and then we'll show the answers and continue on with uh, Leslie's presentation. Great. Just want to know who in the audience has actually had the quote-unquote pleasure of working with um, uh, grant funds. Different from any dollars you're getting from your state in terms of any piece of apportionment or, or any kind of um, any kind of state dollars you get allocated toward corporate education. Different from that. So these are actual grants. All right. So let's see what we've got here for responses. 
So the majority, 71% of you said that yes, you have received grants for your contract training units and 29% said no, we've never even tried for one. So kind of a bit of a mix there. Okay. Well, that's really good, though. I mean, in terms of uh, folks that have gotten grants, so you've got that, you've had that experience of um, working with those dollars, and so I'm not really sharing anything new with you, um, in terms of, of um, in terms of you know the process that's involved in going after grants or or actually securing grants. And so you know, there's no margin in there. So let's talk about though. We will talk about as we move move through the presentation. We are going to talk about ways that we can make that work to help us build our contract training business into the future. And for those of you who haven't gone after them, that 29% that haven't gone after them, um, I, I don't blame you. Um, but there are ways that we can utilize grant funding to help us build our contract training business. So we're going we're gonna to get into that in, in uh, just a bit. So let's talk about state reimbursement. So uh, <laughs> here you have, so state reimbursement that's uh, really, it's talking uh, about what comes from your state, your state agencies, your system office. Whether you're a university or a community college, you have a state, um, a state enterprise um, there that's responsible for um, some level of administration of funding um, to the rest of the um, the rest of the players in the state. So, um, and when I talk about that, you see this nice yellow guy with his shiny money. Okay, well, that's a little facetious in that state agencies are not apt to just show up at your door and provide you this money. There is there with state reimbursement can be an application process. Even if you're allocated funds, um, like in the state of um, uh, the state of Ohio, they get uh, they get a certain uh, 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 dollars that are allocated to them. Actually, in uh, sorry, in Iowa. Um, and I think we've got a representative from Kirkwood on here, but but you get you get um, funding that comes in the form of they they call them 260E funds. Um, that's just the name of the kind of fund that you get allocated, and corporations can apply for their 260E funds that will help them offset their training costs um, for delivery um, for delivery of of, uh, of corporate training, and so. Um, in the state of California, we have a state agency that's called the Employment Training Panel. And so um, in California, we can um, apply for those funds on behalf of our corporations um, in, order to, um, in order to help them offset the training costs um, for um, their employee training that they're doing. Um, there are rules and restrictions you know, that are involved with this, so it's a similar to a grant process, but there is an application process that's involved with this. Um, it's just often, you know, it's often a little bit more specific in terms of, you know, this money is available to help up, uh, to help support your the employers or companies and businesses in your area. Um, again, management and tracking is really critical, um, uh, and the reporting can be very complicated. The employment training panel dollars in the state of California, not only is the application process a little bit complicated, but this reporting and tracking can be very complicated in that you only get reimbursed, you get reimbursed at three points along the way of this training. You get, um, you get a certain uh, percentage of the funds that are allocated um, when somebody enrolls in that training. Um, when somebody completes the training, you get another piece of it, and when somebody stays with the organization for 90 days, so it's encouraging some retention, you get another piece of it. And you can see as people kind of fall out of that training cycle that funding um, can fall out as well. So it's really important for you to be able to kind of keep track of what's going on both from, a, um, you know, from, an, accounting and, and, uh, from an accounting standpoint, but from a you know, dollars coming in standpoint. So, um, and there is, with state reimbursements, there can be a small margin. Um, typically, it's, it's in the form of some sort of an administrative fee. So if you are going to be doing the reporting and tracking on behalf of your uh, employers, um, you can get paid for doing that. And that may be, you know, you get a certain, you get a certain percentage. So, so that can at least help, um, help offset your, 
um, delivery costs and your uh, implementation costs. Okay, so I want to talk, uh, I want to ask you a second question and see if anybody in the audience um, is actually um, working with state reimbursements. So, Chris, you want to pop up question number two? Yep. Uh, thanks, Leslie. The next question should be on your screen. And uh, the question is, I have access to state funds for my contract training unit. And again, we'll give you a little time to respond, and then we'll read off the answers and continue on. Great. As I, as I, you know, as as we look around the country at, um, um, in terms of contract training um, entities um, that get state reimbursements, you know, not everybody, not everybody has access to those, or gets a piece of apportionment. Um, I know in the state of Texas, they get they get apportionment dollars to help offset contract training, so um, contract training uh, costs for their businesses. So. Um, you know, you got to pick the state. I know Maryland, they get a significant piece of the pie to help offset training costs. But in other okay, states, let's see what we got for results here. Actually, it's about the same breakdown as we had before with the last question. 71% said yes, they have access to funds, and 29% said no, they do not. Wow, okay. Good deal. So I'm glad that you've had that experience. So let's talk about some best practices um, as it relates to as it relates to both of these sources of funding and what they can do to help um, to help you build your contract training business. So first, my first recommendation and my first best practice for those of you who have not applied um, and kind of stared away from applying for grant funding. Um, or going after um, going after your state funds, I would strongly encourage you to identify a grant writer or a proposal writer. There is a special language that those folks have. I didn't have it. I can articulate kind of what we can do with the money, but there is a special language that is um, that these grant writers and uh, proposal writers have for, for identifying and getting funds from um, from public agencies, and so or even your nonprofit agencies, um, uh, I would strongly encourage you to invest in that. Whether it's a, uh, you know, and, and you can you know have the you know the cost covered um, can be you know can be uh, covered by your by your grant dollars, but. Um, more times than not, this is just a good investment if you're looking for grant funding um, or you're looking for that state application. I would really encourage you to work with people that do this all the time. There is a you know small network of of grant writers across the country who have uh, repeatedly uh, you know written and applied for grants and. And you'd be amazed at how these um, agencies, the Department of Labor, Department of Education, um, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, all those big players um, can recognize can recognize the language of those that are seasoned are, are seasoned writers. And so, um, um, I would just encourage you to take a look at that. I think that is a real best practice. I think with all the hats that we already wear um, in our organization, um, that unless you've you know taken a grant writing class or or two or three and have successfully written for grants. That this is something that you can that you can definitely outsource, and I would encourage you to do that. The other thing I might uh, I want to I want to talk to you about in these is these grants is, is utilizing the word pilot. You know, this is a pilot project. I want to start with something small. Okay, in terms of you know maybe the number of companies I'm going to address or the industry sector I'm going to be um, looking at or the particular curricular area that I want to expand and grow. Um, but you talk about a pilot project and then you talk about from a sustainability factor how you're going to take this project or this pilot project to scale. And so when you are looking at going after grant funding um, or even you know you're even starting with um, looking at some state reimbursement dollars, you've got a limited number of training areas that you're going to be going after that funding for, 
or you've got a uh, you know a limited industry sector that you want to um, maybe you know you want to explore an emerging technology in a particular area. So you're going to start with a pilot project. Grant uh, granting agencies um, really appreciate that not only are you talking about kind of this pilot project, see how that works. So you want to get your you know get all your your ducks in a row before you take this to scale, but there is a sustainability factor that you can build into that, and often granting agencies are looking for that, that this is something that you can start with grant dollars, and that you will then be able to continue as you incorporate this process into your daily business practice. So when you're talking about getting something started, that would be that would be my recommendation. That would be a best practice as you start to look at um, applying. That you 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 know kind of start small with a pilot project, so they're very well received. The next thing I want to talk about is from a marketing standpoint. So um, there's a, there's a number of different aspects that grants can help you do from a marketing standpoint. I want to really encourage you to, you know, uh, market the fact, you know, let people, make people aware, post it on your web page, put it on Facebook, um, you know, tweet about it, that you've landed this, this grant and that it's for this particular audience and you're looking for players to be involved, maybe that's what you, you know, so that um, uh, people can uh, obviously take advantage of, of, this, of these new grant dollars that you've brought to the table to help build the, um, you know, the economy in your in your area by you know uh, getting better trained a better trained workforce. But you look at um, from a marketing perspective, your marketing message really needs to be about the value, and that's why I say value in the next phrase. Um, and the next thing is talk about the value that this point, this you know, these grant dollars are going to have. That this is not something, you know, the, the value and the, the impact that this is going to have. It is not. I would strongly encourage you to not say this is so you guys can get free training. Um, it's important that um, from a long-term sustainability and the fact that it's going to have a longer-term impact on your contract training business, that you do not teach your clients, your customers, that the, you know, the only training opportunities they have available from you are the free ones that come grant funded. It's amazing how easily they can look at you and say, oh, you're actually going to charge me for this next year? unless you do your marketing up front and set those expectations up front. And I would strongly encourage you to not give it away for free. Even though you're getting state reimbursement dollars or you're getting grant funds that are going to offset the training costs that they have to, um, they have to provide, I would still charge them something. So that, you know, they've got the expectation that Training, even though it's you know grant funded or you get some state reimbursement dollars, that they've got some skin in the game. So you know there's an administrative fee that needs to get charged, or there's a small markup that you're going to um, uh, have them pay for. It keeps them engaged, and it, it does express the value of what you're bringing to the table. When you give it away for free, it has less of an impact. They think it has, the perception is that it's less valuable. And that's not the case. These are funds that you're utilizing to bring new curriculum to the table, that you're you know, exploring new areas of, of, of training and expertise that, the, you know, that your community needs. But you have to do a really good job of, of setting that setting those expectations. So when you are utilizing grant dollars to, set, to offset whatever training costs um, you want to determine, that, that you aren't setting a long-term expectation that they're going to get training for free from you. Because that can have a devastating impact on the sustainability of your organization um, as, as these big companies are participating in these grants with you 
and they've got that expectation, well, I'm not going to buy training from you because I can get it for you, you know, from you for free. So it's really important that that message comes across very, um, very strongly. And even if you're using a, um, you know, you, you, you're pulling together an advisory group to help you um, write those grants, and I would strongly encourage you to do that, that you've got these people pulled together so the first time they get together in a room is not after you've gotten the grant funding, but you, you have some expectations set up front and make sure you're talking about that up front. Okay? The last thing I want to encourage you to utilize those grant dollars for, because there's no real margin in grants and very little margin, um, if any, in you know, working with state dollars, you want to help be able to build your program in other areas besides, you know, um, uh, uh, just revenue from training. So if you can utilize those grant dollars to help you develop curriculum that will then be yours to resell, you're building your program pool. So you get curriculum development dollars you're able to build that program and then you're able to offer that curriculum um, to the rest of your the rest of your company that makes you know that that curriculum fits um, you can also use it to in that same way you can use it to help build your instructional pool because you can attract people that are able to do this to help you with the curriculum development to then do the delivery and so now you're building your instructional pool you can utilize it to help you, um, uh, you know, build out a lab, a training lab with equipment. Or, you know, maybe you're doing something new in, um, you know, in a welding curriculum. And, you know, they've got the latest and greatest in, I don't know, arc welding or something like that. And you get this grant to help you get some equipment to outfit your welding lab. Well, you've built capacity. By doing that, and so um, you look at these grants not just in that short-term, you know, first-time window. Let me get some training out there, you know, for this particular industry sector. Um, uh, you know, if you look at it in the short term, um, you're gonna you're gonna lose in the long term. So you want to look at it as a way to leverage those dollars to help you impact what you're doing in your in your contract training business, long term. Do you want to think about it from a sustainability standpoint, setting appropriate marketing um, uh, messages, uh, making sure that the value is there, and then utilize it to build out the rest of your program. So adding new curriculum, new equipment, new instructional resources um, uh, uh, to, your, to your program, so you're then able to offer that to other people in your, in your service area. Okay. Let's talk about that last part, managing, tracking, and reporting. So this guy <laughs> looks like the last dean I was talking to about um, about oh let's go after some let's go after some grant dollars together, and it just makes you crazy. So how many of that 29 percent who have not pursued grant opportunities have not pursued it? And this is poll question number three, and I'll go ahead and have. Um, have Chris pull that up for you. Yep, the question's up there, Leslie. So, uh, yeah, the question is so how, how many, many of you don't. You have, right. How many of you had not pursued grant or state reimbursement opportunities because you are, you know, you either know it's going to be hugely frustrating or, um, or you're afraid it's going to be hugely frustrating? So we'll just give you a little more time to respond, and then we'll get the answers up here on the screen. Okay, let's see what people have to say on this one. And the majority are feeling it's not too too frustrating going after it, 73%, and then 27% can relate to the 
the photo of the man pulling his hair out. <laughs> All right. Well, that's good that it's not frustrating. Yeah, that's that's really good. Um, but I do know people that are, you know, that hesitate. And you're, that's 21 percent of you saying that you know you kind of hesitate. Um, you know, uh, you know, it, it it can be it can be extremely frustrating. So what I wanted to share with you just just uh, quickly is um, is is that we have at at uh, Augustoc set up a. Uh, some brand new functionality that's going to help you um, manage, track, and report out on your um, on your grant or state reimbursement funds. And so, I just wanted to give you kind of a bird's eye view. This is a enhancement to the product that is um, scheduled to be released sometime this summer. Although, don't hold me to those dates. But I wanted to give you kind of a background. And even if you're not um, utilizing lumens to help you track this. This is the kind of thing that you want to make sure is is um, is available to you in whatever solution you're you're working with. But um, we will be adding in in the current product in lumens B to B the contract training um, of functionality for um, for the lumens product lumens B to B has the capability to kind of track. Um, grant dollars that you're using or state reimbursement dollars you're using to offset the training costs. But we don't keep track of a funding organization and there's no mechanism um, really in place right now to help you even um, uh, invoice that granting um, agency. And so we've built in some um, functionality and, and including building in some additional players um, that, that will be involved. So, we have set it up so that you've got a funding organization. So whether it's the state of Iowa or or the um, employment training panel out of California, you've got the ability to track a funding organization and then identify different pockets of money that are available to you from that funding agency. And whether it's you know annually you get a certain dollar amount or it's a particular project that you've um, applied for and won. You can identify the dollars um, that are available to you from that funding organization. And then as you build out your proposals, and actually what we're, we're talking about, um, this, this, this new functionality, we will actually have something we're calling a pre-proposal. And so you will be able to assign funds to a category of, fund, of, of uh, training types that you're able to fund with with those dollars. So you know, just broad categories. I've got I've got ten thousand dollars from this um, funding agency, and um, five thousand of it I have to use on um, manufacturing training, and five thousand of it I have to use on leadership training. Not sure what leadership classes is going to be yet. Not sure what manufacturing classes it's going to be those main categories and we'll be able to build a pre-proposal that will allow you to allocate those funds. Then as you get more specific, that pre-proposal will be able to easily convert to a proposal and we'll start to build out what actual classes you're going to be offering. And then of course from those proposals you'll convert those to a contract um, and then whatever balance you've got left over, you can actually invoice the client um, uh, for that. But the grant dollars, hello, the grant dollars, so taking that kind of from the green contracts on forward, you can charge to the client, but you can also then say the funding organization is going to have an account now, an account receivable. And I'm able to say the client owes me $2,000 and the funding organization is going to allocate $8,000 to that $10,000 contract. And you're able to then invoice the client for the $2,000 and you're able to set up an invoice for the funding organization and then record those payments accordingly. So it's a... Um, um, it's a relatively, you know, it's it's a it, it certainly is a lot more functionality than we currently have, but you can see that we're able to um, we're able to manage this process now from soup to nuts, including being able to take a look at oh look, okay, um, being able to look at 
um, your funding organizations and see what kind of money you've got available. So you get, look at this, Iowa State has given you three and a half million dollars and you've set up four funds for that money. You have uh, 1.5 million dollars still available and you've allocated two million dollars of that. You've charged out 1.5 and you've invoiced 1.3. And so somebody has a, they haven't they haven't paid you for that two hundred thousand dollars yet, and you have an invoice for a certain part of it. So you can take a look and you can have an unlimited number of organizations that are providing you funds, whether it's state reimbursement dollars or grants, and you're able to track this all the way down to that proposal and contract level. So you'd be able to see not only the number of funds, but then the funds that have from those funds, what proposals, what what contracts have had those funds allocated. And obviously you can see whether or not they've been invoiced. So it's a, a brand new system, but this part for me is the piece that, you know, helps make the rest of, you know, that process that much easier. So if I can get a grant writer on board to help me write for those grants, I've got a system in place that will help me track it down to the individual participants who are taking those classes. So that I'm able to easily pull the information out and report it to the, uh, the funders. Okay, so one last question. <laughs> okay, instead of pulling your hair out, wouldn't you rather it be like this? So let's just ask that final polling question. All right, thanks, Leslie. We got the question up on the screen. Who wants to feel more like this about their grants? And the, <laughs> this is the photo that we just saw. I like the you know, I like to feel a little more zen about my about my grants and state reimbursement dollars. I don't know about you. Let's find out. All right, let's see what uh, people have to say. And 67% uh, of them are no more done. And um, fortunately, nobody wants to not feel zen. And 33% just want to feel zen all the time. <laughs> all right, yay. <laughs> okay. Well, really, this is, you know, you've got to have a really good tracking tool to help you manage all that because the reporting and the tracking and managing those um, those grant dollars can be extremely frustrating. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm encouraging you to take a look at this tool when it comes out this summer, um, of course. Um, but um, uh, really, I, hopefully I've been able to provide you some hints and guidelines, some some best practice tips in order to help you um, identify grant, uh, grant state reimbursement opportunities, um, as well as helping you manage those so that they are, you know, they, they don't have just a one-time impact, but they can impact the way you grow your business over the long haul. So I am open for questions. All right. Um, Thanks, Leslie. I um, just wanted to remind people that if you do have a question, to send that in through the question box on the toolbar, and we'll spend the last uh, few minutes here responding to as many of the questions as we can. And we do have a couple questions that have come in. Um, one question is, um, we do charge a fee for grant fund training, but have run into the same problem that people don't want to pay for any training. Any suggestions, any suggestions for handling an inherited Problem with clients who are very used to receiving grant fund training for one eighth to one fourth the cost of traditional training. I would, you know, I would, I would. If this is, you know, it's uh, not an uncommon question. I see it happen a lot, which is one of the reasons why I mentioned that kind of, kind of early on in this process. But it's going to be, an, you know, it's going to be an educational thing, and I think if you don't um, pay attention to it, you know, and you just you know, uh, and don't do something proactive about it, I think um, it's going to continue to be a problem. So I would put some energy into, um, you know, uh, following up with those clients that have worked with you through that grant process and talk to them, you know, um, 
So, so you may not ramp them up to full price right away. You know, say, okay, so grant dollars have been cut off. Here's what, here's what you've got. But maybe you can do an introductory. So you've been a grant player with us in the past. Our, you know, that, those, those grant funds have expired. Um, but we want to continue to provide you with the kind of exceptional training you've experienced. Um, and because you were participating with us, we're gonna we're gonna you know, we're gonna be able to offer this for you um, at a you know grant player you know give them some kind of a discount for being participating so you don't you don't grant them up right away to to um, to to full price but it is you know it is an education and it is lots of talking about um, you know being able to uh, uh, you know, lots of talking about, about appropriate um, expectations. And so, you know, you've inherited an issue. Um, it does and will have a continued impact. Um, the other thing is, you know, the other thing to consider is that some of these people that are talking to you and they only want to um, work with you in terms of, um, you know, be, you being able to provide them free training, well, they may not be the best client for you in the long run. So, you know, if you're getting significant amount of resistance, um, you know, it may be that okay, so maybe they're not, maybe they're not my maybe they're not my best clients. And I've talked to them about, you know, we're 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 you know we're we're paying attention to this. We want to provide you this valuable instruction. Um, but we can't do that anymore because our grant dollars have expired. We can't do that anymore for free. So you need to talk to them about, you know, and if, and if they continue to provide you with that resistance, maybe you move on to another organization. Um, we don't have to do business with everybody in our service area. All right. We have another question here on if you could talk a bit about um, how any recommendations on how one could crack the code regarding WIA or WIB funding? As this could, this seems to be a problem, particularly for private universities, but also can be a problem for the public ones as well. Okay. So for those of you, uh, and, and Chris, um, basically, yes. it, uh, it, uh, Workforce Investment Act dollars or workforce investment board with money. This is money that's allocated to um, basically basically through workforce so workforce investment act, uh, federal act that supports workforce local workforce investment boards. And so they you know that authorize the um, development of these workforce investment boards. Um, and workforce investment boards are really responsible for um, uh, uh, developing a, a skilled workforce. And so workforce, uh, they typically work with underemployed, unemployed workers, people trying to get into the workforce um, versus the incumbent worker that exists at our, um, you know, that, that, that we typically work with I'm um, in the in the in the contract training arena. However, they can be a great partner, a great feeder um, for you, you know you working with businesses in the area. The <laughs> to crack the code, um, <laughs> you know, it varies workforce investment board by workforce investment board in terms of their willingness to partner with a local community college. They are supposed to. There is some language in the Workforce Investment Act that says that they're supposed to partner with us. And so um, uh, it, with community colleges, there is less there for private universities. So just know kind of going in that you know they're kind of geared towards working with a local community college versus the private um, universities. However, if you're able to, they have um, Ways that you can be certified to be pro to be a, a a provider, and so you want to look into their certification process or getting on their um, recommended um, uh, trainers list. Um, so you want to take a look at that. 
You want to attend their Workforce Investment Board meetings where they are talking about workforce development. Um, for that, you want to, I mean, they're, they're not the most exciting meetings, but you want to develop a relationship with them. You want to share with them what it is that you're doing um, in support of, of their mission. Um, and, then, uh, you know, and then what I've seen happen a number of times is that they're, you know, they don't want to do the training themselves. Several of them do. But oftentimes, you know, they don't want to do that training themselves, and so they will contract with you in order to provide that instruction. And those can be some very lucrative contracts. But they are contracts, not really grants. You can partner with your Workforce Investment Board to go after grant monies together, but, um, but you're really looking at developing a contract with your, work, your local Workforce Investment Board to help them provide instruction, interviewing skills, things like that for their, for their clients. Great. Thanks for that response. Um, that seems to be all the questions we have at this point. So unless anybody's got any last minute questions, I think we can probably wrap things up here. And I'm not seeing any more questions at this time, so I think we can kind of move to the last slide and and kind of wrap things up. So right. thank you. Thank you again for everybody for coming today. And Leslie, do you have any last minute uh, things you'd like to say? Yeah, just know that, you know, uh, just know that this, you know, like everything in contract training doesn't happen overnight. It's going to take some, you know, looking, scanning, researching, making sure, you know, uh, uh, what opportunities exist out there for you, what really is a good match for your organization. You know, I find a lot of times we're chasing those dollars, and because these dollars are kind of a closed loop in terms of, you know, it's not going to really perpetuate my, my, my business unless I plan for it in the beginning. So, um, you know, set those expectations appropriately. Good luck in pursuing those funds. Um, you know, and if you've got questions or want to take a look at the at the new tool, um, I'm happy to I'm happy to share that with you. You've got my contact information there um, on the screen, so um, jot that down, and, and um, I'm happy to entertain any any questions that come um, to you later later in the day. Or if you want to talk about the the software solution, I'm happy to I'm happy to share that with you as well. So go out and make it a great day. And uh, uh, thanks again for participating. Yep, thanks. And if you could also just take a minute to respond to the poll at the end of the, uh, or the little survey that will pop up after you sign up, that'd be appreciated. So thanks, everyone. And we'll sign up now. So have a great rest of the day.